Hello Happy Valley! Today's video is going to be on creating your own tessellation stencil that we will use later for our project. We'll be designing and creating an abstract shape and from that shape we will have to manipulate it and create it into something recognizable. Make sure you've turned on and tapped into your creative mind. And with that, let's get started. Before we get started on this assignment, I want to go over the required materials. You're going to be needing some pre-cut squares that I've provided you, scissors, you'll need a pencil, some form of tape, it doesn't have to be this masking tape, and a piece of paper. Now, If you did not get the, the squares from me, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to cut them to the correct size. So if you do not have the, this material right here, uh, you're going to need a thick piece of paper, preferably something cardstock or poster board. This is actually poster board, a piece of poster board, and a ruler. I'm going to first demonstrate how to cut the paper to the correct size. So if you've already got your pieces or your squares, you can fast forward. All right, so we're going to make our squares, and you need to have at least three or four in case you mess up and want to make more, um, but these are going to be three inch by three inch squares. I like using straight edges that are already there so I don't have to cut anything extra. But what I'm going to do is at the bottom of my paper, I'm going to measure out three inches. So lining that up with the zero, on my ruler and it's really hard to see but lining up my zero and marking where the three is and then at the top of my paper I'm going to do about the same thing this time though my three is going to go over here and I'm going to mark where the zero is my top part is not very straight so I'm coming in on the paper a little bit there's the three lined up with the edge of the paper, so I'm going to mark the zero. Once I've done that, I'm simply going to connect those two tick marks together. Make sure it's nice and perfect. The, the key to this project is really perfection, especially when you're making these squares. So I would have preferred you to get in touch with me and come pick up the squares uh, from the office or somehow get these so that you don't have to prepare this paper. Um, but anyway, so now this whole strip right here is three inches, but we need to make three inch squares. So I'm lining my ruler up at the very top. I'm going to bring it down just a bit because the top part of my paper is not level. So I'm going to start here. Make a little tick mark where I'm starting inward a little bit. You don't have to do this if your paper is nice and level, but my top part isn't. So every three, so one, two, three. At the three, I'm going to mark. Then three to four is one, four to five, five to six. So at the six, remember every three. And I can't fit a last one in on the bottom. So I'm going to do this on the other side, well actually I can draw a straight line, but if you're one of those people that cannot draw a straight line, you're going to want to copy those tick marks on the other side. From this I can only really get two squares. Remember I'm coming up here and making this nice and straight because the top part of mine was wonky. So here's one square, here's another. And what you can do is simply extend these lines out because they're already marked for the three inch. Just make sure your ruler is nice and straight. You might want to double check yourself if you're having issues with the ruler. And then come down here and just mark another three inches. You should have some extra squares. At least three squares will do, um, but if you, you know, are having a hard time making up your mind with certain things, 
you might want to create more. And I've told you in class that if you're one of those people who has a hard time making up your mind, I probably gave you more squares just in case we had some issues. So there you go. You're going to want to cut these out. Take your time. Remember, I can only use these four. These two down here are obsolete. They, they're not the right size. So I'm going to cut out my four squares. Take your time when cutting. Move the paper, not the scissors. I always have students who try and move the scissors. Move the paper. Also, cut off pieces you don't need. It doesn't. You don't have to be perfect down here because I don't need these pieces. Except this line right here we want to be careful with. But line that scissors up, open them up quite wide, and just come back in here and check. But you don't need any of this stuff, so you don't have to sit there and be perfect with it. Get it out of the way. Anything that you don't really need, just get it out of the way. It doesn't have to be perfectly cut. All right, so cut out your four squares or however many squares that you created. Hopefully you are using a thick paper. You, it, it has to be a thick paper or else you're just going to make it so difficult on yourself. Um, so a cardboard, not cardboard, but a poster board is perfect. I like that consistency, but if you have um, cardstock, you're going to want a thick cardstock, not just the word cardstock, um, but I really recommend poster board. I think that that's the best thickness that you're going to need, and we're using this to create stencils with, so the thicker, the better. All right, so you might be asking yourselves, what in the world is the stencil Miss Sussis keeps talking about, and what are we doing with it? So we are going to be creating, again, a tessellation, and that is just a pattern um, designed based on the tessellation or your stencil that you create. So your stencil is going to be made into something recognizable, whether that's an object, an animal, you know, um, insects, fish, whatever. It could be an, an inanimate object like a shoe or a cell phone or something like that. Um, what we will be doing is we're going to be we're going to be creating our stencil today in this video after I get done introducing this project. Um, your stencil is going to be abstract at first. You're not going to know what it is. You're going to have to look at it and create it into something. Uh, once you've got your stencil created, we're going to be tracing it over and over and over again onto the composition. Now, if you do the stencil correctly, it will fit within itself every time. So here's a clip of something. You can see it's the same one every single time. It will fit within itself every single time. There are no gaps in between anything like that. Um, now, each one of our stencils are going to be based on the same subject, but we're going to have to change each one to differentiate them and make them a little bit different. So if you look at the picture on the screen right now, you have these birds, but they either have different facial features with their eyes, um, they have different color schemes, so there are ways that you can differentiate, but each one of these is going to be slightly different based on either their colors or the details that you place inside of them. And I'm going to show you guys uh, some student examples from the past. And so I get this one a lot. It happens a lot. You'll notice this shape, um, but it was, it was perfect for elephants. So each one of these elephants, although they're all elephants, uh, they, are, they each have their own characteristics. You know, you have this one right down here that's in love. Uh, you got this one, he's a little bit kooky. You got this one who's asleep, this one who's crying, this one's got a bunch of little pimples on its face. So they've got all different kinds of features. Look at this one, looking at the rest of them. Uh, so you can really have fun. This one down here is winking. This one looks like he's got a black eye. So you can have a lot of fun with this. Notice how there aren't any gaps in between each one. Uh, the whole entire space is filled, even if it's just part of the elephant that's showing on your paper. Everything is filled. 
Now these, if I recall, they were called duck bunnies. Uh, so we made our own kind of animal. And that's fine. You can create your own creatures, your own animals. You can mix and match the animals. Um, or, you know, mix and match your, your characteristics. Um, and you, you can have a lot of fun with this. A simple dinosaur. I like this one. These are dogs or bunnies. Lions. And now you might ask yourself, what is so different about this? Or even I'm looking at this one. This one, you know, the eye color is different. There, weren't, there wasn't a lot of differentiation in this one. I would like to see more, uh, but it, it's still a really good example. And then here, so what she has done in this art piece is that they are done by rows. They're all the same, but they're done in rows. Again, this is something that um, is not part of the, the um, parameters of the assignment, but this student came to me, talked to me about it, told me what she wanted to do, and I agreed with it. So you can bend the rules to, to make it fit for you. But... Um, this is lions and or cats, and um, they are nocturnal. So at nighttime, the strips that are like the light gray with the eyes open, it's nighttime. And then with their eyes are shut, it's daytime because they are asleep during the day. All right, here he is, Zero. <clears throat> Everybody loves this one, and it's a lot of fun. She, she you know, wanted to recreate Zero, so... She said, Zero has such an iconic face, I can't really change it. But what we could do is change the collars and also her variations with pressure. So what I mean by that is that we have, you know, really, really dark pressured lines right here. And then it gets a little bit lighter. That's the lightest. And then it's going back up that value scale. So that's how she differentiated. And the noses and the collars are a little bit different. Sticking with that Nightmare Before Christmas theme that we've got going on, I think this is called the Oogie Boogie Man. Don't quote me. Uh, but this student created the Oogie Boogie Man in her tessellation, and then she wanted to give him different costumes, uh, so she created him in different different um, costume ideas, and I think it turned out quite wonderfully. All right, so we have some devils with this one. I really like how she has in, in between the spaces, uh, she put the fire in there. It, it, this is a wonderful drawing. I really like this one. Um, I like the differentiation. Although they are the same, there's a little bit of differentiation, but she kept them at that diagonal stripe. So I want you to work with color pencils or markers for this. Um, and if you really wanted to have a cartoon look, it's smart to go around it when you're done and um, hit it with a black Sharpie. It will really make it pop and it adds to that whole um, hand-drawn cartoon feature uh, that you're trying to do or that this student was definitely trying to do. Uh, but there needs to be a reason as to why you are outlining um, just because I want to outline is not a good enough reason. You need to, you know, this student wanted his art piece to look like uh, cartooned. So it was okay. All right, so these are like little elves, and they each have their own little hat. Uh, and the elves have different facial features. What a cool idea. I like to see something that breaks from the norm. I see elephants and stingrays and jellyfish and mushrooms all the time. Yes, the, the when we create the stencil, it does kind of make a similar um, stencil every time and it does look like those things, but I really would like to see you push outside of those boundaries. All right, this was one of my top students, so please do not judge yourself against this piece. A lot of these that you see in here are ones that I have handpicked over the years to show you my best quality work. And this by far is the best I have seen uh, doing this project. 
I like sharing it with you, um, but please don't hold yourself up against this student. This is also a, a upper level art student and she was way better than I think I would ever be. But what she did is she saw pigs in her, um, in her stencil and she wanted to do character pigs. So we've got all kinds of characters from movies. Uh, we got Harry Potter. We've got, I think this is Morty right here. And then there's Rick. Um, we got Wednesday Adams. We've got Ghostbusters. You know, I think there's a Marilyn Monroe pig in here somewhere. V for Vendetta. The Joker. Um, yeah, we've got Star Wars in here. We've got, even this is supposed to be like Winnie the Pooh. So she wanted to recreate, you know, there's, there's Marilyn Monroe right there. Rambo. Uh, you know, have fun with Indiana Jones up here. So again, high quality student, don't hold yourself against this. Remember, I'm only here to um, help you with, with your art. Um, and I'm also not judging you on your abilities. I'm judging you on um, the fact that you can listen and uh, follow instructions. All right, so we have horses in this one. I really like this one. It reminds me of a carousel when you get on those horses and you ride around. They're, they're each different and unique. Uh, so she was able to see a horse out of this. And then we just have the background. You know, if you look at it, it's flowers and it's red, flowers red or flowers pink, whatever color you think that is. Um, but yes. Okay, we, here we have deer. And they're in different environments. So we have something like summer. We have something in the evening. You know, here's a volcano. Maybe it's snowing here. Uh, so I really love this. One of the details that she put into it. Uh, it looks like this deer has been shot. Um, you know, having some fun with it. And you can see just about anything inside of that shape. Uh, it's how you manipulate and, and move it around. This was a former student of mine um, that he was able to see multiple animals and characters and asked if he could put them all in his art piece. Of course, yes. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoy this. So we have like a shark's head and then we have a monkey and then we have like a snake or a worm um, added into it. And I just think it looks, it looks fantastic. It came out so cool. The infamous Spongebob. Um, for this one, she has Spongebob facing us. It would have been so much better if she had outlined this with a black Sharpie or outlined it in some sense with a, sh with a Sharpie uh, to really make it pop. It, I feel like it would look so much better. But what I really like about this is that they're not all facing the same way. Some of them she has, you know, with his hand behind his back and here's, you know, catching the jellyfish, the jelly net. And then he's got the, the spatula behind his back. So I found that to be really fun because, you know, SpongeBob is iconically yellow. And so if we were to change him from it, we lose that, that similarity, that sense. Um, so the student said, can I paint, the, you know, color them all yellow? Well, absolutely. Can I keep him in his, his outfit? Absolutely. But what can we do to change him? And uh, we talked about changing his facial features, but it doesn't really look like she did much of, of that on this one. And this one, we just have like an angry bunny. He's yelling. Um, you know, we kept the same color scheme. We kept the same look. So I did take off points because I wanted to see some differentiation. And the student did not ask me about it prior to um, turning it in. So anyway, if you've got a cool idea, talk to me about it. Let me know about it. Um, you know, and we can, we can work from it. And I got one more for us. There they are, the jellyfish. Um, I still think it, it looks fantastic. It was well done. But again, this is another one of those students that's, uh, you know, above above the mark, sometimes even above me in some situations, um, or talents. So in no way hold yourself against this. 
but I just really like showing it because it's the cream of the crop that I've had. All right, let's get back to working on our stencil. Before we get started, I want to kind of briefly go over what it is that we're doing. So we are working with a square, and we're going to be creating a tessellation stencil from this square. You will be creating a random line. So if we're creating a random line on the bottom, we're just going to create a random line starting and stopping on that line. It's best if we start or we stop in a corner. So it's best to start or stop, doesn't have to be both, in a corner. What will happen is this design, we're going to cut it out. So we're going to cut the whole thing out, not in bits and pieces. We're going to cut the whole thing out. And we're going to move it above. So the one on the bottom is going to move to the top or vice versa or vice versa. Okay, if you draw on the top, it's going to be moved to the bottom. But let's just say from the bottom, we're going to take that whole piece and move it to the top so that it will kind of look, I did horrible on recreating that shape, but it would look like this. And this would no longer exist. <clears throat> now, on the sides, we're going to create a line on either one of the sides doesn't matter which side you choose, but you're going to create a random shape, a random line. It needs to start or stop in a corner. Same thing. Start or stop in a corner. And the one on the left or the right is going to be taken to the opposite side so that this doesn't exist anymore, this line. And then our shape whoop, kind of looks like that. Okay, So this whole thing right here and I'm going to go around with my pin, is now our new shape. And I will explain this a little bit more. But I just want you to realize that our bottom piece, or our top piece, is going to go to the opposite side. So if you worked on the bottom, it's going to slide up to the top. If you worked at the top, it's going to slide down to the bottom. Okay, And then left to right, or right to left for the other pieces. That's a brief little introduction on how this is going to work. Let's get out one of our pieces and begin. All right, so we're going to be creating something random. You cannot have something picked out already. You can't say, I'm going to make a chicken. Um, it doesn't work that way. You're going to create a shape and then from that shape we're going to try and see something recognizable. So when you're working with your shape, it's best to start or stop in a corner. Either or. It doesn't have to start and stop in the corner, but it's best to start or stop in one of the corners. It's going to make it so much easier. If you draw right here in the center, it's not starting or stopping in that corner and it's going to be difficult for you to um, create your stencil and make it work properly. So it needs to start and stop, I'm sorry, start or stop in a corner. And remember, anything that's done on the left or on the right, it's going to slide to that opposite side. Anything done on the top or the bottom is going to slide to the opposite side. So I'm gonna do something simple here, and I will say don't stay shallow. When you stay shallow, as in staying close to this line, it doesn't really give you much to work with. So it's nice to kind of come in and utilize some of the space inside of here. But I'm going to start with my left-hand side first. I'm going to start in the bottom left-hand corner. I've got my pencil mark right there in that bottom left-hand corner. And I'm going to just create a very rounded, organic shape. Again, I have no idea what I'm really creating right now. I'm just making the random line that's going to cut out our shape. So this piece is going to slide over to the right-hand side. So now I need to make something 
either on the bottom or the top, and I'm going to do mine on the top. So I'm going to start in this corner, and I'm going to stop in that corner. I didn't have to do that, but I've decided that's the one I'm going to do. So once I've got this drawn, and you cannot copy mine, do not copy mine, um, I'm going to have three pieces. Here's one piece, here's the big piece, and here's another piece. All right, so I'm going to cut these out. Now one thing I will tell you, let me put this aside for a second, is what I mean by staying shallow is don't stay really close to this line. Look at how close I am to that line. Okay, There's not a lot of differentiation that's going to happen. Another thing I don't like about this is there's a lot of jagged little edges. Right? A little bit too much. Don't make it too difficult on yourself because you're going to have to cut this out and you're creating a stencil that you're going to have to trace. If this is all over the place, or I have a lot of kids that do something like this, Look how jagged and close those are. This is very similar to when we were cutting out our no tan. I said avoid things like this. This is going to make it difficult. Another problem I see with this is it's not starting or stopping in one of the corners. It's directly in the center. Okay, So don't do things like this. It's not going to work well for you. Unless you're with me right, and you have an idea and you want to work here in the center, I can help it. I can help you make it work, but if you are by yourself, do not do this. You're going to be lost in the sauce. It's not going to work. You're going to have big problems. So do not do this. Right? Start or stop in a corner. I'm going to make another one just for more examples. Um, let's see. All right, I'm going to start in this bottom left-hand corner. You notice I like to do that, and I like curved shapes. I'm actually going to tilt it so I can draw a little bit better. And that's fine. And I'm going to make something just a little... Just notice how far apart these pieces are. They're still a little pointed here, which is going to be difficult on me when I go to cut, but I'm a professional. So there's a random weird little shape that I created. And... I really like this, so I'm going to do this again. But down here, I'm going to start in this right-hand corner. I'm going to make it spiky, but look at how far apart my pieces are. Okay. So this means that this bottom one is going to slide up to the top, and this one on the left is going to slide over to the right. So what I'm going to do is cut out these pieces. I'll have one piece here, one piece here, and one piece here. So I'm going to cut out all of these pieces, and then we're going to come back. All right, so at this point, you should have drawn your, th your two lines, uh, two shapes on your square piece and cut them out. Make sure you now have three pieces. You have to have three pieces. Don't cut these things in half. If you have more than three pieces, you need to go back and create a, another uh, design. But what we're going to simply do is the left-hand side is going to slide over to the right-hand side. So I'm taking that over there. It is not flipped like we do with the no tan. It's just simply been moved. And it started in that bottom left-hand corner, so I need to line it up with that bottom right-hand corner. All right, and this top piece is going to slide to the opposite side. It started and stopped in the corners, so I just need to line it up. You'll notice some of my pieces are a bit fragile, and you probably have the same thing. That's why we need to really take our time when we're putting them together. And in order for this to work properly, everything has to, you have to take your time when you're putting these pieces together. Okay, you can't have big gaps in between here, or it will not work. Literally, the edges have to be lined up perfectly in order for it to work properly. We're going to tape this down. Okay, We're going to tape this down. You don't want tape hanging over the sides. You want it to be in here. And I like to reinforce it by turning it over uh, and taping the opposite side. So I'm just going to place my tape in here first, making sure that there aren't really any gaps in between. And then I'll flip it over 
add another piece of tape to reinforce that back. And then I like to go back in and add even a little bit more tape to really make sure it's staying down. You're going to be using this as a stencil. So you want to make sure it's taped well. Make sure that no tape is on the outside, it just stays inside of your shape. And then this bottom one, this is my fragile one, so I really want to make sure I've got it all nice and perfect. You do not want to tape things like this. This is too big of a gap in between. It needs to be flush with that side. So take your time with it. And I always, once I get it down, I kind of hold it down with my other fingers. And I get that good piece of tape on there. Nice, nice and firm. And then I'm going to just tape this down. And I've got a lot of little edges on here, little pieces on here, so I want to really make sure things are as best as they can be. No tape. Notice there's no tape that's going on the outside of the shape. It's all staying on that inside. You do not want any tape hanging over. So that's my first shape, and I'm going to go to the second one to demonstrate some more. So here is my second one. This is the one where I made a lot of little weird angles on it. Okay, I did spread them apart, but it was still very hard for me to cut, um, to cut out, especially you know, not you know, using this this paper. Um, so if you're using something other than poster board and you do something like this, you're really going to to be in a bad place. I'm just kind of lining up, making sure things are where they're supposed to be before I slide them over to the other side. So this one's going to go over here. And it started and stopped in the same corner. And then this piece will go up here to the top. So with my tape, I'm now going to tape these things down. Make sure they're nice and perfect. Lay my piece of tape down. Make sure that you don't have any going over the edge. So here's a great example. Here's a piece that I have going over the edge. I can pick it up and tear off that part, and that would be probably the best way. Or you could use some scissors, actually, since I've already got mine laid down. I'm just going to cut that off because I don't want any tape laying over the edges. Give it a good tape down, make sure we're not hanging out anywhere that we don't need to be. Here's this piece, make sure it's going the correct way. Which I put X's on top of mine, and that might be something you want to do with yours. I know you can barely see them. Uh, but there's an X there. You might have saw it earlier. I put X's on there so that tells me that they all need to have an X so I can see. Uh, so make sure it doesn't get flipped because if you don't see it, an X on there, either A, you didn't put one on there, or B, you've got it flipped going the wrong way. If it is flipped going the wrong way, it will not work properly. That happens every year, no matter how many precautions I take. And this year is, is going to be really imperative because half of you I don't even see in person. Uh, so make sure you've got yours going the correct way. Make sure we've got everything right. And I've got a teensy, teensy, tiny little gap here. My, my uh, paper is pretty thin there. I made a really weird shape. But I see something so cool out of this. Okay, I feel like that's nice and secure. I might add a little bit more tape, especially in these thin areas down in here, uh, just to really reinforce it. 
you're probably like, what in the world is this? I know it's it's weird right now, but I'm going to help you um, see something. And you're going to really have to use your, your creative sense um, to see something and create something from this. Okay, so once we've got our, our shape or shapes created, we are going to get our piece of paper out. All right, so once you've got your paper out, you are going to trace your stencil or stencils, your stencil or stencils at least three times. Okay, I want you to trace this at least three times. Now you can trace multiple stencils on here if you'd like, if you've created several stencils. But I need to see it traced three times. Um, and then I want you to create what it could possibly be. So when you're holding your stencil, I'm going to start with my simple one first. Here's my simple one that I created. Uh, and when you are holding your stencil, it doesn't have to be in any particular way. You can see it from, from any direction, flip it, flip it over. You decide on how you want to trace it. When you're just looking at the stencil with the tape, um, sometimes it's, it's really difficult to read and you have no idea what you're looking at. That's why it's best to kind of get it out um, on the paper. So when you trace, Hold down in the center. Make sure you have a good sharpened pencil and simply trace around the outside of the edge. Now, if you did this correctly, you will be able to fit this, this uh, stencil within itself every single time. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. So this is my shape that I've created. Okay? And you might, might make it easier for you once you've got it on the piece of paper. If you want to move it around then and look at it from different angles, it doesn't have to be read properly for me in order to see. I just want to see that you've traced it on here three times. And I want to see that you are creating um, contour lines. Those are inside lines. Those are lines inside that help me understand what it is I'm looking at. This can be an animal, this can be an, a reptile, this could be an inanimate object like a shoe or a camera. Um, it could be anything that you, you know, create, right? It could be a monster. Um, it could be a imaginary character. I want you to use your creativity. Now, when you are designing inside of this space, you have to stay inside of this. This is the space we have to work with, which is inside that stencil. You cannot draw anything on the outside because it's going to be another stencil. What I mean by that is this will fit right down in here, and I'll be able to trace it again. Over and over and over again, it will fit within itself every single time. So then I can take this stencil again and move it up here. And it will fit again. And then it'll fit up here. And it'll fit over here. It'll fit every single time. Um, so look at this and try it and see maybe what it could be. And that's why it's good to move it around and see from different angles. Uh, I'm not getting much from this one. It's kind of boring in, in my opinion, um, but I do see, you know, the typical jellyfish or mushroom that I see all the time. Um, I even could possibly see a sea turtle, and maybe that's what I'll work with. Um, so I'm, I'm so sick of the jellyfish and the, the, the mushrooms. Um, so I'm going to try something different. So I'm going to make me a little turtle, and this is where I see the turtle's head. Okay, but I don't have to use that whole space. I'm just in here sketching, and that's what I want you to do. It's, this uh, assignment is all about sketching. And you can use online sources. You could say, oh, I see a turtle in here, but I just don't know exactly how I want to draw my turtle. Well, go look at some things. And a, a really good uh, thing to look at online is clip art. But you need to have an idea of what it is before you go searching, uh, you know, clip art. So I see a turtle in here. I can see a turtle. So I would go look for turtle clip art. I don't just want to type in clip art 
without knowing what it is exactly that I'm looking at. Um, but I'm just going to wing it here a little bit and sketch some ideas and then I can really perfect it later. But this is my turtle shell. So here's my turtle's head. It's going to go into that shell. Here's his nose. Notice as I didn't use this space right over here because I'm going to be able to color that in. I'll be able to shade that in, use the color there, uh, and then my turtle will be here. Okay. So I'm going to set up that shell a little bit, and this is where I could maybe set up the shell. And I'm going to have some shapes up here. So it usually has like a top shape. And this is a really a rough sketch. Okay, these, these don't have to be um, perfect at first. We're just going to create an idea. All right, we're just right now I'm just developing an idea. So I'm not looking for anything that looks perfect. I'm just sketching out and I'm like, well, I see a turtle, but how do I see a turtle? How do I, um, you know, how can I create this into a turtle? I'm kind of drawing and sketching out, but this would be the shell. And then maybe he's a sea turtle, so don't they have fins? But maybe I'm only seeing part of his fin. So here's his fin coming out. Of course, this cuts it off because there'll be another turtle right there. So here's his little fin. And then here's a little foot. I'm only seeing part of him. So all this area right in here, I'm going to shade it in with my pencil so you could see. All this right here, I could, could make it into the ocean or, you know, make it part of the background. This is part of the background of this particular shape. But here is my little turtle. And then here's his little face. And I can add some, you know, little dots here to show his little leggies. Some cute little dots. And now I'm going to make his little smile because I'm going to kind of cartoon him a little bit. So here's his little smile. And then I'm going to draw, maybe this is where his eye will be. There's an idea. I've got my little turtle right there. But maybe that's not all I'm going to create. Again, I said I saw like a jellyfish or a mushroom. Um, so we could just say that this is the stalk of the mushroom. Draw in this space. Here's the bottom part of my mushroom. If you're one of those that have already done mushrooms, I'm going to fuss it to you and tell you do something different. Be unique. Try different things. It's best to try things that you are uncomfortable with and really branch out. So here's the bottom part of my mushroom and then I could do those little polka dots. And all of this space back in here would be background. So I want you to create three different possible sketches for me, three different possible designs. You could do as many as you want, um, but I want to be able to see three designs on here or three and I, I want to see the inside. I don't want you to say, this is a turtle, but then you draw nothing to show me that how, how it is a turtle. Okay? Don't sit here and show me this and say, well, this is a turtle. Well, my question to you is going to be, how? How is it a turtle? You need to make it into a turtle. So show how there is a turtle in there. Okay? All right, so I've drawn two possible designs for my one shape. Um, but I've kind of run out of ideas, and I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i not really particularly fond of this shape, so I made a second one, so I'm going to, to trace it on here. Now, remember, you only have to have um, a stencil trace three times for a design. But let's just say I've done two designs here, or th two times I'm going to do my third one, which would be a different stencil. Each one could be a different stencil, but you need to come up with three possible ideas of what it could be. So here is my sea turtle, here is my, you know, mushrooms, seen it, done it. I've got this really crazy shape that 
I think is going to be something super cool. Um, so I'm going to just, without with saying that, I'm going to sit here and trace it. So now these, you have to be really gentle, especially when you have a bunch of jagged edges um, and you need to take your time when you are tracing these on here because these are the type of stencils that can cause you a lot of issues if it's not done correctly because of all these little divots and areas that they go in. So you have to, if you're going to do something like this, you need to have a steady hand. You need to take your time with it. Take your time. Slow and steady wins the race. What also happens is they start to bend up. I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but this whole piece is bent up. Uh, that's why it's really good to use a thick piece of paper. That's why I really like poster paper. It's one of the cheapest and thickest that we have. Okay, so there's my, my shape. And this, if I did it correctly, is going to fit within itself every single time. Now, I don't have to trace another one on here, um, but if you did want to, you can. You can trace as many on here as you want. You can even trace on the back of your paper. If you're 100% virtual, you'll need to take pictures of both the front and back if you've done that. Uh, but my my hybrid kids, you're more than happy to I'm more than happy to take that. I'll just, all I have to do is flip the page. Okay, so I have this thing on here, and I can turn it and look at it from different perspectives. And I suggest you do it. Um, and you know, I I see this really from this perspective as like a a monster or some kind of uh, imaginary character and this is where you can really have fun with these things. Um, so I, off the bat I get a mouth right here okay and I can't draw anything in this area because this is going to be another shape so if I were another stencil this would be you know the area of another one and I see this kind of as a tail of some sorts uh, so I'm just going to finish this off here and then I get this as like a leg, maybe. So I'm just really gonna have some fun with it. I'm gonna draw an arm in this space. So I'm gonna give him, there's his shoulder. And I don't know what kind of alien this, or not alien, but what kind of monster this is. Maybe we turn this into a wing. I'd rather have a wing. Let's give him a wing. Let's make him real fun. So I'm gonna make a wing for him. There's his wing, and he's going to, maybe these are horns of some sort. Maybe he has multiple horns. So I'm gonna round the bottoms of them. You know, these could have been ears if I really wanted to make it, but I like the idea of him having horns. So, and they're gonna have some stripes on them. Or these could be a party hat. It could have been maybe these are his horns and here's the party hat. I can't add anything to it, but maybe this middle one's the party hat. So let's make it look a little different. I could put some circles on here. All right, and now we need to give him some features. So either his head could face this way or we could we could change the position of his, his face, his head. Uh, so we could make him a, like a little fluffy, fat little monster, a little cuddly monster, um, and he could go this way. This could be his whole body, which then I would probably need to, to move his wing a little bit. Um, or we could make this where this is the face, and his face goes this way. And that's originally what I was doing, but I'll play around with it. We'll see what I want to do. Okay, so this right here could be a foot, and I'm going to make him, maybe he's going to have a big old toe. And here's his foot. And then we're going to make him have a few other little toes. He's a monster, so he doesn't have the same number of toes as us. He can have as many as I want him to have. 
There's his foot. He's got a weird little foot right now. His toes. And maybe he has really skinny, one skinny leg, and then there's his behind. I do like him facing forward. So I'm going to put, and he could have as many eyeballs as I want him to have. This could be his nose. Maybe he's got, here's his, here's his nose. This whole area is his nose. This could be his hair if I wanted it to be. He's got glasses. He's a he's a cool dude. He seems pretty happy. <clears throat> and here's his party hat. I'm going to get rid of this part right here. So I'm just going to shade that in. Things are starting to come together. Maybe I won't use this as his mouth anymore. So areas I'm not going to use, I'm just going to shade in. Make it a black spot. Um, so I can, I'm able to see what I want to do here. Maybe he has an ear. He could even have like an elephant ear or, you know, it doesn't have to be human-like. Maybe his whole body is like, he looks kind of like a hedgehog monster thing. <laughs> his body's coming together. And maybe he's got another foot forward here. But we can't see it because it's blocked by the other monster. But we could draw his toe. And then there's his other two toes. So really, I'm just playing around and having fun with the shape. And we've got all this space in here, and I'm just going to kind of color it in because it's not being used. I'm not going to use it. And then here, this could be, like maybe he has a tail. So if I didn't want to use that, I would color that part in. Um, but let's give him some clothes so he's not a naked monster. He doesn't have to have clothes. He could be a hairy monster if we wanted to make him one, but I'm going to give him a little bit of some human characteristics, so I'm going to make him some pants. So he's got some pants on. And then this would be his t-shirt. We could just do like a cutoff t-shirt. And he's got a big old hunchback. I want you to have fun with it. This he could have even been a chicken. Now that I look at it this way, um, you know, we could have made a chicken looking this way. Now that I see it, or some other kind of animal with with a nose here. Maybe he has. Maybe it's a porcupine. I don't know. With with a with a hat on. <clears throat> so I want you to at least have three fully sketched out ideas. Something like this. I don't want to just see the stencil traced on the paper and you write, you know, it's going to be a chicken monster man, party chicken monster man. All right. Now, how am I the one that's going to have to come up with the visual um, ideas? You need to draw it out so that I can look at it and be like, oh, it's a chicken 
party monster man. Okay? Don't just circle it or draw it out and then write what it is. But I want you to label what each one is. So this one was my sea turtle. This was a mushroom. And this is my chicken party monster man. <laughs> that was random. And then I, what I want you to do is if you, one of the ideas that you like, that's your idea that you're going to work with. I, you know what? I could have a whole lot of fun with this one right here. Okay. So if that's the one that you want to do, I want you to give me a big old check mark or somehow let me know that that's the design that you want to recreate on your actual uh, piece for the, the project. But anyway, um, basically, once you've got your stencil created, I want to see it at least three times. It doesn't have to be the same stencil. It could be different stencils. I just need to see three of them on here with full sketched out ideas with labeling as to what it is. All right. Good luck.